I believe focus is something that can and must be cultivated. We can learn to focus more deeply, but it requires daily practice and discipline. In this video, I'll share with you the mental tools and practices I use to develop my abilities to focus. Question How do you tend extra focus? I've personally settled on one answer. Eliminate distraction. There are two types of distractions, external and internal. If I'm writing at my desk and I hear voices in the back, distracting me from my work, that's an external distraction. On the other hand, if I'm struggling between two decisions, that's an internal distraction. At home do I watch Netflix or do my homework? In my career, do I work as an engineer or a writer? If we're out to eat, do I listen to your words or do I think about what I'm about to say next? All of these are things that I consider internal distractions and I develop two practices for. Eliminating distractions, memento distract you and memento pass you. If you're wondering why I use Latin phrases that sound like spells out of Harry Potter, it's because I wanted to as much as I could, connect the practices to their linguistic roots, and to another ancient practice, memento mori. I won't waste your time in this video explaining what memento mori is, but you can look it up in your free time if you're curious. So with that said, let's jump right into the practice. The first practice is memento, distract you. Memento translates to remember, and distractio, which eventually became the word distraction, essentially means to be pulled apart, separated, or divided. So imagine that your focus is a beam of light. You direct this beam of light onto an object or computer work. For example, an external distraction is something that pulls the light towards itself. Like people speaking in the background, there are two simple solutions to this problem. The first is to remove the distraction. Let's say the voice in the background is coming from the TV. You can obviously just shut the TV off and this removes the obstacle to your focus, the thing that's pulling at your beam of light. The second solution is, if the obstacle is immovable, to remove yourself from the source of distraction. But say the noise is coming from your family Talking in the background while you can leave your house and go to the library. All external distractions resolve the same way. Either you remove the source or you remove yourself from the source. So here's the daily practice. Start a list where you keep track of and notice the things that are pulling your attention away from the thing that you're trying to focus on, whether that's conversations, the TV, the computer, your phone music, or whatever. Write down the things that divide and attract your attention then find a way to eliminate these distractions from your workspace or remove yourself from them. Here's some examples of a bunch of common problems. Added solutions. If you get distracted by background noise, either go to a library or some other quiet place, buy earplugs or headphones, and or shut off the sources of noise, such as the TV. If you get distracted by your phone, put it on do not disturb or airplane mode. Turn off notifications. Use accessibility settings to make the screen black and white so that it's less appealing to look at. Place it in another room or give it to a friend or family member while you work. If you get distracted by the internet, use an app like self-control to block apps on your computer or make sure you study in a place where you don't have access to technology. And lastly, if you get distracted by silence, either go to a coffee shop, make a study playlist or find a steady buddy. Memento Distract You is a daily practice where you systematically Discover the things that pull your attention away from your work and eliminate them. And as your list gets longer and longer, you get better insight into the ideal working environment for yourself. The second practice is memento, pass you again. Memento translates to remember and passio, which eventually became the word passion, translates to suffering and enduring. So imagine again that your focus is a beam of light and you direct this light onto your homework. Internally, the homework represents your value of duty and right now, your phone is pulling your attention away from your homework. Internally, the phone represents fun. So your attention is torn between doing your duty and having fun. And this is an internal distraction. Internal distractions are difficult to overcome because they can't be eliminated. One value, either duty or fun, has to end up taking a higher priority over the other. Here's a clearer example. Imagine it's Friday night, and Sally is torn between studying for her upcoming exam and going to her best friend's birthday party. She's torn between work and friendship. These values, or priorities, are having a conflict inside of her. And until she resolves this conflict, she'll have trouble focusing. Now there are really two options. The first one is that there is no right way to choose which value or priority is higher. If this is true, then it shouldn't matter which one Sally picks studying or the party. But most people don't live life this way. 
The second option is that there is a right way to choose which value or priority should be higher than the other. Whether it's money, friendship, or love, how do we decide which one of our values should be higher than the others? Values act as a compass, guiding us through life and giving meaning to our world. If we value art, we'll find it meaningful to go to a museum and look at paintings all day. And the more we value art, the higher that value is for us. The more meaningful this experience will be. If we don't value art, however, we might find it boring to go to museum, at least relative to the other things that we value more and could be doing instead. In other words, if our values and priorities are in the perfect order. This would lead to the most meaningful life we could live. So internal distractions occur when two values are in conflict inside of us. And the way to eliminate this distraction is by placing the values in the correct order. Or in other words, prioritizing them correctly. And the second practice, the mento passio, which I'll explain now, is a tool meant to help with this ordering process. Now imagine a set of dots. These dots represent the moments of your life, some good and some bad. The final dot represents death, or in Latin mori. And one dot will represent the worst day of your life, and this day we will call the baccio. We have to get imaginative with the baccio and imagine the worst unavoidable sufferings we can for ourselves physically and psychologically in such a time with nothing else to help us. The only thing that will likely help us get through it is meaning. We would likely need ultimate meaning to get through ultimate suffering. And the idea behind this practice is that if you can find meaning in the worst potential day of your life, you've correctly structured your values and priorities to maximize the meaning of your life. And so the next time we have two internal values in conflict, we can use Momentopath show as a tool to help us find the path of greater meaning for us, which path will be more likely to help us endure future suffering. So in summary, focus must be cultivated. And I've given two you practices that I used to cultivate my focus and eliminate distractions, and I think of both tools, like the hammer and chisel, which I have to consistently use to sculpt my character. Memento Distractio is a daily practice that helps us discover and eliminate external distractions, allowing us to create our ideal work environment, and Memento Passio helps us resolve internal distractions by giving right order to our values and priorities, helping us discover the path of greatest meaning. This essay was constructed using logic and reasoning, powerful mental capacities that are important to master.